Oh, man, good. it's so it's good, good to see here. I so forgot good already. What are those braids called? They're, they're not called, braids. They're not braids. They're, no, they're goddess locks. Goddess locks. They're handles. Yeah. They're, they're called handles. handles. <laughs> It's marriage night, yo. It's marriage night. Well, so it's marriage bad. night. Well, we married, eh? Marriage night has begun. Yes. Night. It has begun. It has begun. It's going to be a wild night. Why are you night. blessing us? <laughs> she blessing us. She, she blessing us. You see that? She is. <laughs> it's okay. It's a safe place. Yes. Oh, I know, right? Well, we are pumped. We're excited. Shout out to all the married folks in the room. Yes. Come on. Give yourselves a hand. Come on. You've been married this long. Come on. Come on. Whether it's three weeks or 30 years. We're making it. You did that. I remember it. Um, who was it? Uh, Billy Graham's wife. Yeah. They asked her, have you ever considered divorcing Billy Graham? And she said, I've never considered divorce in my life. Yeah. She said, now homicide? I have thought about that. <laughs> She said, I, I thought about that it. often. I love That's it. That's great. So, hey, you have not committed homicide, <laughs> at least in your marriage. Not You're yet. doing all right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Not this year. Oh, my not goodness. This year. Good deal. All right, Morgan Rivers. We We're supposed to, you got questions. Yes. You got Are there any rules around these questions? Yeah. There, rules. No, yeah. I got, no, I got one rule. No you got to be as honest as humanly possible. Is that You're right? saying that with the raw way here. Yes. Okay. Please. Now, okay. Rivers, that won't yeah. be a problem. I got to go home with this woman, so I can't be that honest. I mean, <laughs> okay. I'm going to ruin my life for this Do thing. what gets you home safely. <laughs> yes, get, get, get them all. And how do people send in questions? Are they sending in? How do they send in questions? So in the type form. So if you guys haven't already, that is from the You Married 97,000. You go in and you send your questions. We are asking them up here live. So make sure if you haven't done it already to ask your question. And we won't say your name. We promise. We won't say your name. <laughs> I know you're thinking some things, yes. but it's anonymous. Okay. So first question. Are you guys ready? Let's go. Let's go. Right. Ready or not. Uh-huh. Here we come. Okay. So the term successful marriage seems to have a lot of definitions. What makes a marriage successful? Does the level of a couple's physical intimacy in a marriage reflect the quality of their marriage? Oh, that's a good one. We're just going to start right there, huh? That's That's good. That's a long question. Deep and... Deep, okay. What's, What's a successful marriage? I think success, you have to define it first by the model of marriage that you've seen. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of us, we don't know what success looks like because we've never seen a good model. Yep. And so right. I think hitting the reset button and looking at scripture and looking at that two people became one uh, is accepting each other's differences for unity in your marriage, uh, which does then spur intimacy and spurs things like that. Even though I would think that a successful marriage is we have sex. You know, it's, it's been 25 years of marriage. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't minding every night. You know what I'm saying? Come on, but now. I have to accept the differences in our appetite. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I'm catching up like 10 right. seconds right. after right. you. Right. Just, oh, my Lord. Am I going to go one? Did I catch it afterwards? Like, wait, First what did he just say? I'm sorry. But, I'm sorry. Go ahead. But, I'm sure you... I, but honestly, we would talk about, you know, this scripture and the two becoming one. And then how God sees marriage is like honoring your marriage vow. And then yeah. we, I don't remember what scripture, but it talks about outdoing one another in honor. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And so for us, success looks like trying to outdo one another in honor. Oh. And as we try to outdo one another in honor, typically we're not arguing as much. Typically we have communication. Typically our unity is good. Typically our intimacy is good. So I would say success in marriage is not culture based. It's Christ based. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Now you cannot have a successful marriage without intimacy though. That is the I mean, opposite of success. Absolutely. <laughs> that is failure. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> I, I think one, and I'm not going to add anything, a thought that came to my mind is success in marriage may look different in different seasons. Oh, yes. okay. I yes. think one of the most dangerous things is it's great to learn from other marriages, mm-hmm. yeah. but it's toxic to envy or to compare, yeah, compare. and say, well, her, his, his wife, you know, puts hot meals on the plate table every day and this person does this and this person does that. So and good. I think sometimes you just got to know what season you're in. That's so good. And it may not sound good, but sometimes surviving a season is success. Come on. Because the season was so overwhelming. Yeah, it was so, so difficult. Good. And it's yeah. like, hey, we, we survived. Come on. Yeah. We, 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 we made it through. Um, so I think having sober judgment of the season that you're in that's I think it. just to add that, because I love what you said, surviving, I think what you have to know is to have a successful marriage, you need to communicate. 
Yes. You know, like what does it mean to us for us to win in this season? Because this season, it may be, hey, I'm under so much pressure at work. I really need us to have sex like every other night or every single Amen. night. Amen. You know, that could be something that you need. Can, or can, can you I'm under a lot of pressure at work. Gosh, this guy. Can, can you lay hands on your friend? <laughs> first, of all, first of all, okay. Here. I'm going to clear something up after you finish Yeah, talking. but it's just communicating. What is the I'm touchdown for this season? Yeah. And sometimes the season <laughs> changes. And if you aren't uh, communicating what the touchdown is, yeah. what does it look like for us to win in this season? What does it look like for us to outdo each other in honor? Like, what does mm-hmm. it look like in this season? Because it's going to change as things go along. So when you communicate, sure. then you know, okay, this may have been a bad thing in the past, but right now, this is actually a good thing. You don't want yeah. me to spend all that much time cleaning up the house you just want me mm-hmm. to be naked and ready you know and another season it's no that's i really need thing, not... i think that's a prophetic word for but me. in another season <laughs> in another season i want my wife to actually help me make the home a little bit better that's yeah. what it means in this season so what i'm hearing you all say is that um, sex is important <laughs> sex is important and just for the record for the record he jokes about this all the no, time. You're really your business. I'm, I'm, Thank I'm, you. I'm those, <laughs> Thank I'm you. Those. And first of all, you you're getting old. You're getting up wow. in your years. Wow. And the roles have reversed. Okay. So, just in case there's someone out there wondering, the older he gets, he's great. You do great. I do great. I'm satisfied. There we go. But my appetite is a little more than yours lately. Would we not agree? I, and I and I ain't mad. I'm just tired. I'm just tired. And I'm like, I, whoever declines. I, I, hey, it's a good appetite. It's just going to be a short meal. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> if, if, if you're oh, okay with that, I'm good. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> Hey, if you want three courses, I ain't good. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Anyway, now that we have clarification, (laughs) um, my thought is, so in our marriage, what I'm just going to share one definition of success for us during a season, to your point, was being able to get through hard things together. That's great. Determined the success of our marriage. Yeah. Like, are you able to get through hard things together, hard seasons? Because guess what? Life is full of them. Mm -hmm. Whether it's health, whether it's been addiction, like in our story, like it's been so many things. And I think we are successful because we did hard things together and we're committed to it. Yeah. I'm grateful. I love it. We have a question coming from Columbia. Columbia, Columbia, are you joining us? This is crazy. Um, so how long do you wait after the argument to have sex? Like, is it like a time period or is it like immediate during? I don't know. Do you know what you to <laughs> right away. <During. laughs> Steven, Pastor make, Steven, you, you want this They're talking about one? makeup sex. I think they're talking about makeup sex. Okay, it's a thing. How long do you wait? Well, I've never had control over that, so why don't you let him know? Is that the answer? <laughs> yeah, that's the answer. <laughs> I, I think let, let's talk about the argument uh, side of it first. Yeah. Um, many of us have not been taught a healthy way to argue. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So some of us came from homes that every time there was a disagreement, there was domestic violence. Mm-hmm. So we've yeah. kind of got wired Anything that is disagreement is dangerous. So you just shove it, shove it, shove it, shove it, shove it. Zai and I, our first uh, year of marriage, we were like, you know, to be in love means you don't disagree. Yeah. So we would go like four months and would not bring (laughs) anything up. And we're not forgiving. We're just stuffing. Yeah. It's And then about every four months, we'd have this big blowout. You would have a big blowout. I would have a big yeah. blow up and then somebody else wouldn't speak for three, four days straight. Oh boy. You yeah. can play this game. And uh, 
And then you called me. Listen, like, we had the same And argument. it was like a, <laughs> it's like a seven-day drought. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And then we're like, okay, we're burning. We got married yeah. for more than this. So, yeah. And, so I think a bigger thing is, and let, let's be honest, year one, it took us seven days to kind of get back to a good place. Yeah. yeah. Four years in, we're down to three days. Mm-hmm. Then we got down to 24 hours. Mm-hmm. We, we hadn't got past 24 hours yet, so we're still working. <laughs> we, <laughs> but I think it really does, do you have a healthy understanding of how to argue? Yeah. Do you avoid low blows? Do mm-hmm. you attack the issue and not the person? Yeah. And I think Come the on. better we get at arguing... Uh, the faster we get to the make up part of things. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, I think uh, I, I was no, no, thinking no, no, of more ahead. drama. I, I think start. one of the things that we are trying to help couples with is a couple things because the question is really about arguing, like you said. And we kind of teach this thing called time, tone, tact, and then touch. Mm-hmm. Like, is this the proper time to have the conversation? Mm-hmm. Right? And tact would be what is the reason for having it do you want to be right or understood yeah two different things yeah right and then tone is is am i a safe place while i'm communicating this and a lot of couples struggle with each other not being a safe place because someone's gonna blow up right and then touch is like create let them know that you are a safe that this is a safe connection while you're having a hard conversation yeah Mm -hmm. and i think for us she won't let me touch she won't she won't let me touch (laughs) We got, we got. Pass. Right? <laughs> Yesterday. Absolutely. And so for, <laughs> I love it. Hilarious. And so for us, yeah, yeah. We, we both like argue loud. We both argue loud. One of the things you talked about is resentment. The loudest argument mm-hmm. is the internal argument that you're having with yourself, with not a conversation with your spouse. Yeah. yeah. Because you're talking to somebody that can't fix it. Yeah. yeah. Yourself. And I think resentment is the thief of intimacy. And so if you can figure out some of this stuff, like how soon do you have sex afterwards? Yeah. You know, hopefully you can argue and still have sex because you compartmentalize contention. Yeah. You know yeah. what's so interesting? Yeah. Because growing up, I'm one of those where I didn't like conflict. Just like mm-hmm. you said, if we start, people start arguing and all that, it's just bad. Something bad is going to happen. So we would have conflict, and I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I forgive. I forgive. I didn't forgive. Mm-hmm. Wow. I put that thing in the back pocket. I put it in the drawer, and I would just look at it at different times. And, of course, that, the Bible talks about how good. the devil is the accuser of the brethren. So something else happens, and it's like, of course, well, mm-hmm. Stephen doesn't da 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 And then something else happened, and you just start packing all yeah. these things up. And that's when all of a sudden, like, the big blow-ups take place. Because wow. I didn't think that you can communicate and say, hey, this really hurt my feelings without yeah. something negative happening. But what happened that really helped me break the, that cycle? Because I think a lot of us, we don't like to have arguments either, afraid mm-hmm. of what we're going to say in the, heat of the most, um, in the heat of the moment. It's just, hey, Stephen is not your enemy. Uh, right? It's good. Like, who are you talking to? He's mm-hmm. not your enemy. So one of the major things for me is just believe the best in him believe the best like he may have not done the best but believe mm-hmm. the best in him he yeah. did the best he, he did yeah. the best he he's the best, best. <laughs> I he, he's the best <laughs> you should be lucky to have someone as amazing as him oh that. my god <laughs> believe the best and also being able to receive um uh receive criticism that's great you know everyone has a store where you don't take things back even if it's broken because you know they're going to give you attitude you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, if it's broken, something's wrong, it's like, forget it. I'll just eat it. It's just fine. And then there are other places, whether it's three months past, yeah. you know you can return it because I'm like, oh, okay, is there anything else I can do for you? Like, you give good customer service. Mm-hmm. I was horrible at receiving customer service. Like, I think with, the phrase is, what kind of customer service do you give your spouse? What kind That's of customer great. service do you yeah. give That's your great. spouse during an argument? He would mm-hmm. say something, and I shut down. And then he wouldn't wow. say anything until it's really, really major. That's and I think good, I'm y'all. probably not the only one in the room. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Not to be the dead point. Now people argue. I think as Christians, yeah. we've got to accept that we don't always act like Jesus. Yeah. So good. Ooh. And you've got to know when I'm not acting like Jesus, how, what's the ugly part of me? Wow. Mm-hmm. And I've got to be aware of that to make sure that that ugly part does not rear up. Some of us mm-hmm. like to argue, mm-hmm. and we just argue to win. 
We're just, it's just that bulldozer personality. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just, I just, this is a game for me. Yeah. I need to, we I need to win. for a living. Listen. You're not winning. I love, I, we could. I am yeah. rolling my eyes. Go ahead. I argue with it's them hard. every Sunday. Right. It's a blast. It's right. Yeah. And then some of us that are threatened by conflict, we will surrender the argument to get past it. It's great. Even though we're not really in agreement right. with where it ended. 100%. And both of us have to know what our unredeemed side is. Come on. And those of us that surrender quickly to move past, mm-hmm. whether it's through prayer, whether it's through counseling, it's whatever it may be, yeah. you've got to build yourself up where you stop surrendering. Yeah. And actually come to a place where you've reconciled and have agreement. It's great. It's great. And then the bulldogs of us got to stop. Okay, yeah. pause. What does reconciliation look like? Reconciliation looks like one of two things. Either agreement mm-hmm. or postponement for a specific date. Yeah. So we either agree on what we're going to do mm-hmm. or we're have a little ceasefire but, hey, we're going to come back Wednesday at 5 p.m. We're going to make a decision on this. That's great. Sometimes, let's be honest, it's too hot. Yeah. yeah. It's too heated. I'm too emotional. She's never emotional. I'm too emotional. And it's just like, I, we, can't, we can't come to a conclusion in this. So I have a thought on that. Yeah, yeah. So you're at that place where emotions are hot and heated, right? That's great. Yeah. It's okay to say time out, right? Let's take a time out. And That's just, not surrendering. Yes. Okay. Just we're, we're not being avoided because... We are saying we're going to come back to it at this date and time. Yeah. Because avoidant is just pretending like I remember with us, it's like I would you just be like, well, we'll, we'll talk about it later. Well, Never. it was important yeah. to him to finish the conversation. I'm so a, I We're going to finish this to right now. To commit, <laughs> I needed to commit to a time and a place. So here's the deal. How do you get out of that personal moment? Huh. Stop taking it personal. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. not personal. If we could just That's for so a good. moment breathe. Separate yourself from the emotion. The emotion is loud. Just take a deep breath and get your brain to say, give me some space from it, and you can stop the cycle of anger and whatever the outburst you're having. That's right. So then the, the idea is what belongs to me and Ooh. what is not mine to deal with. Like, this belongs to Jimmy. I'm not going to take it personal. Like, uh. I don't need to tell him he's wrong right now in this moment. Even though I hear his voice raised, he's being disrespectful to me. I feel disrespected. I don't need to win right now. All I need to do is take a deep breath. I hate when she goes, can we just pray right now? I'm like, no, I don't. Bro, I don't know Jesus. That's what she says. I don't know Jesus right now. I want to act like him. I thought that that was just me. I'm sorry to to interrupt, but I had to tell him. (laughs) You're so good at that. You got a grace I don't have. But here's the deal. You got a grace I don't have. No, it's just me. No, it's me and you. I don't want to pray. But yeah, if, if I separate You're the pastor. from it, though. I think yeah. what Irene says, when she says, your attitude is not mine to fix. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not coming into your dysfunction. And I'm not mad. That's what she's really saying. Yeah. And I'm like, then I think I'm 16. Because I'm like, stupid. You know? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. I'm like, am I 16? But I, yeah. I love yeah, how yeah. you do that because you've modeled that in our relationship. Like, Yeah, like if it's not mine, it's your issue. I'm not going to beat you over the head with it, shame you with it. I'm not going to shame you with my words and say, you are being immature in this moment. I'm going to say, you know what? What belongs to me? Because I can only control what belongs to me. That's so What good. do I need to change in the way I'm processing the, what is happening here? Like, yeah, is yeah. some of it from my early childhood stuff, my model of marriage, my model of attachment. So our, you know, the whole attachment theory thing. Like, so what was modeled to you by your early caretakers? So you're going to try to get that from your spouse in that way. But it's the unhealed, unredeemed space that God wants to heal the way your mama, your daddy, your early caretakers may have disappointed you, hurt you. Yeah. So that... I'm we can about now mama. hear so that we can now hear our spouse Absolutely. from where they're coming from. But first, I think it's just extreme ownership of what part belongs to me. It's great. Taking I love it that. Out of the person. It's kind of, uh, I, and I, I said this in last year's marriage night, um, I really had to come to a place uh, where I repented to my wife because I realized I had amazing vision for the church mm-hmm. Uh-oh. and I had under-visioned my marriage. Wow. 
I, I've got, here's where I want my parking team to stand. Here's how we check in kids. Here's wow. how many services we have. And I had not said, hey, babe, here's the season we take vacation. Here's what we're thinking about the kids' education. And what was happening was we were having more arguments that were necessary. Yeah. Because instead of casting a vision for our family and yeah. being in agreement so from That's the good. beginning, every time a decision came up, yes. we're now we're arguing about that decision because we had never actually set long-term vision. Yeah. So I think, yeah, you got to learn how to argue. But some of us, we were are arguing too much. Yeah. yeah. Because it really was, we didn't talk. In the beginning, before the emotions flared up, yeah. and if I had just done a good job of casting vision for our money, when a spending moment had come up, it wouldn't have been an argument because we had already That's set great. vision for it. That I love is that. So good. I love that. I love mm -hmm. that. Morgan said we're talking too long. No, ahead, it's fine. Morgan. This is so good. Are you guys enjoying this? <laughs> yeah. Listen, you get some pastors together, you in trouble. You lucky we didn't give you three points. No. Still joining in the conversation, so make sure that you text you married to 97,000. Josh, do we have another question? Yeah, I love the, uh, this question that just came in from Columbia. It says, We joke about not having any married friends, so we took the leap and tried joining a group this semester. I've found connection with a few of the ladies in the group, but my husband thinks the whole thing feels forced and wants to stop. What can we do for him? What should I be doing to support him? Can I, uh, go, go ahead. Of course, can I defend him? Defend oh, who? Defend him? I'm gonna get the in trouble. The anti social husband? I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> Some of your girlfriends, yeah. husbands, are weird. Are we the same person? And it's like, like the I same know words. you and homegirl get along. I don't want to mess with that dude, man. Exactly. It's, weird. <laughs> it's so true. I, 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 <laughs> I've, I've got some guy friends that I don't really mess with the wife. Yeah. And it's That's like not these true. are I love just everybody. What she said? What she said she loves everybody. Cat. That's funny. So what we figured out is you're going to have some girlfriends uh -huh. that I'm not friends with the dude and we're not going to do little stupid couple dates. And then I'm going to have some guy friends that you're not really cool with the wives and it's just us playing golf or hanging out or yeah. whatever. But we know that we need couple friends. Really yes. So we got Bottom intentional line. about, hey, who are the people that we feel drawn to the husband and the wife? And yeah. we can hang out. We can vacation together. And we can call each other up and mm -hmm. snitch on each other and all Absolutely. the other kind of stuff that happens in That's that. Really. So I think when he's saying it feels forced, yeah. uh -huh. it may be those aren't the dudes I hang out with, yeah. which is fine as oh, long as you're yes. committed to finding community. Yeah. But if he's like, I don't want to be around anybody, that's, great. that's, that's a completely a different yeah. isolation. But not just community, unhealthy. which is important. It's godly yeah. community. Because yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. everyone yeah. can find some bros and some girls that are about stupid stuff. So I think I, I want to commend them for at least attempting groups. Yeah, yeah. One. Um, and that one group may have not been the your click but there are yeah. many other groups that yeah. we have here so it's like okay maybe this didn't work but there are other ones that work and maybe we don't have to do a group where it's the wife and the husband together but you can do a men's group and you it's can great. do a wives um a women's group and yeah. then you can find your click there but i love that the pursuit should be not just for homies and not just for sisters but for godly community and mm -hmm. that yeah is important i think the motive is important because i've seen a lot of couples where you know the husband he's just not there yet he's in process mm -hmm. and she wants to bring him to fix him mm. she wants to bring him and he to, can and he can good. sense and he can sense it and it's yep. like you're waiting if you're that woman you're waiting for them to talk about him because you've already shared something that you shouldn't have shared yeah yeah right and uh -oh. the Old Testament says what? Do not want to bear, false, bear false witness against. So why are you talking about somebody who's in process yeah. to somebody who can't fix it? Yeah. The yeah. one thing I've never done 
is change a heart. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. Yeah. That's good. And so I think we have to do more praying for our spouses than complaining to people who can't fix it. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. That's good. I will say there is a difference between complaining and also just sharing. Like Absolutely. I am hurting here and I'm just giving up on this person. And so there is a difference. And you have, we have the Holy Spirit. He can tell us what that yeah. difference is. But there is, I am so, I don't know what to do anymore. And so there, and that's more of confessing, I guess, Absolutely. as opposed to complaining. I don't want yeah. people to just carry things with uh-huh. them when they are folks that God has divinely put in our lives to help us in this season, in this journey. But Mm -hmm. that's so good. I don't think people realize sometimes the difference between complaining Uh and dumping on someone Uh and like what is, uh, I'm looking for accountability advice because you have something to hold me accountable or advice to give me to move from one point to another. Yeah. So like Jimmy said, what's your motive? You got to check yourself and just own it, man. Like, if there has to be a safe place where I can go unfiltered and it's typically my counselor. So my counselor has been with us for over 12 years. Mm. She knows when I'm like venting and complaining and it's um, unhealthy. And when I'm, you know, I really have something valid and she never says, tell me more about what Jimmy did. She always says, so what's your part in it? It's all about ownership. And she texts me. So like Irene, so what's your part in it? She's not there to talk about Jimmy. She's always there to work on me and how I am going to respond. You need a lot of work, how though. I, yeah, yeah, I do. You, true you, true you, story. You need to treat me better. Oh, gosh. I don't know about You're that You're a brave one, man, my guy. <laughs> I'm you, you, it takes a special right person to be married to Jimmy I Rollins. Well, I, I, I will right say now. this. There's what? this verse that we think only applies to middle schoolers. Yeah. Bad company corrupts good character. Right? Yeah. And statistics shows... That cheating happens in groups. Yes. Yeah. That and if you're a guy and all your homeboys are cheating, you're more Ooh, likely to cheat. Gonna cheat. Yeah. Divorces happen in groups. Mm-hmm. Your marriage is gonna look very similar to the marriages of your That's five so closest good. friends. Yeah. So I think it's all well and good. I don't like, you know, your girlfriend's husband, but we've gotta know. We've got to find people around us that's marriages we want our marriage to look like because it will influence who we become. It's great. I love that. Yeah. Here's one fresh from you, Mary, just a few seconds ago. Here it is. How how do I get my husband to communicate? He prefers to avoid avoid me and not talk to me for days. Then he acts as if nothing has happened, and I'm even angrier after days of being put on silent treatment. That's Help my me guy. Because I like that guy. I'm over it. I love that. <laughs> can, I, can I say okay, that? Okay, we're going to answer this. Like the next question needs to be light, funny, yeah. hilarious. Jesus. God. Boy. That sounds Talk like somebody. Give us a messed up woman hey. in the next question. <laughs> we can make it fun. Talk to him while having sex. Yeah. <laughs> He'll talk. He'll no. Talk. No, I'm joking. Um... Not a bad idea. I'll say this. Affirmation with a man proceeds communication. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm, if all you're going to talk about is what I need to do and what I need to change and how Mm -hmm. I need to fix this and how I'm already beating myself up. This thing called life is heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Parenting these kids is heavy. Figuring out the bills and all that is heavy. And now you want to talk and you haven't affirmed me in any area. Affirmation proceeds communication. Yeah. You want to get me to talk? Give me a trophy in some area. Yeah. Tell me I'm doing good in some area. Yeah. And so I think so many people want to talk, but really what you're wanting to do is tear them down. What is, what is the motive of the conversation? Mm-hmm. Do you want him to get better? He's not going to get better mm-hmm. by tearing him down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's going to get better by affirming the things that you're celebrating. You want, you want, to, you want him to do better in some areas? Celebrate the things he's doing great in. Yeah. And then he'll give you entrance to communication. Mm -hmm. That is so good. You know what's interesting? I never, I don't consider myself a very disrespectful person. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm African. I don't know what it is, but don't raise my voice. I don't do a lot of that stuff. I don't call people out their names. So I thought that I was the most respectful person in the planet. And it's realized, uh, realizing later, and if y'all probably know this book, but Love and Respect, so good. But realizing a lot later, like, wait a minute, 
I have not honored this man as I ought to. Wow. And because I haven't honored him, he's actually seen some of the things as disrespectful. I never raised my voice. I never called him out of his name or anything like that. But sometimes our communication issues is because I would say something and it wasn't laced in honor. And because it wasn't laced in honor, so he good, did not Josh. hear me. And not only in some of the questions, like he'll communicate. My husband's a dreamer. He's a risk taker. He's all these things. And I'm a lot more conservative. So he'll say something and start to talk and dream and all these wonderful things. And all of a sudden, I'm like, wait, 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 what, what does that mean? <laughs> okay, what does that mean? And so I'll ask mm-hmm. questions, wanting to get clarity. But even how I would communicate my questions, it was seemingly undermining him and his leadership. And he saw that as disrespect. Yeah. And then it became a communication issue. So I had to, and I'm just going to really implore all you women, you may not raise your voice. You may not call your man out of their name or anything like that. But how you speak with, speak to him, Mm -hmm. is it laced with honor? Because if it's not, like they're not going to hear you. They might respond, but you're not really communicating to them or to their hearts. Yeah. And that's not inviting him in. Mm -hmm. That's not inviting. He's not going to want to come to a conversation that he knows he's going to get undermined or disrespected if that's the track record in the past yeah then you have to what's going to be your new normal number one press the reset button right we're going to start over what have we agreed upon is going to be the way we communicate and expectation is not valid unless it's agreed upon so So maybe he's not coming because you guys haven't agreed to have a conversation in a respectful way. Yeah. That's so it's great. like, it, it's not a valid expectation until it's agreed upon. So talk about what it looks like to have yeah. this conversation. When, where, you know, all of that went, like what to do in the moment if that he's feeling undermined. Rules of engagement. Rules of engagement, yeah. Like mm. there, we, code word, like ouch, that's not feeling good. That's one of our code words. And then it, you can, it, it gives him a chance to like switch it up. Yeah. And he makes it safe for me again. Okay, yeah. now I'll re-engage instead of retreating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're going to do this like Stephen A. Smith first take. So we're going to take go. opposing views. Let's go. I agree with everything y'all said. But. My guy, you can't be shutting down for three days. Like, no. come on now. Agreed. We adults out in these streets. You Agreed. cannot. Whether it's, and, and, and the reality is, whether it's the wife or the husband or whatever Straight. else it may be, there, there is some health that is needed there. You've yeah. got to be able to have conflict. You've got to be able to communicate. You can deal with it. Hey, let's figure this out. Maybe it needs to go to marriage counseling. Maybe it needs yeah. to go to one-on-one counseling. But if someone's shutting down and Straight. freezing you out because they heard something they didn't like or didn't receive well, there is some emotional healing that needs to take place there. That's great. One of the things I've found is the best time to fix something is not in the middle of an argument. That's great. Right. So when we're arguing, don't tell me I'm arguing wrong. (laughs) Right. I'm pissed. This is not the time. This is not the time to do it. Can you say that again? Oh, man. Is this now the time to have a really horrible conversation? So we heard some horrible marriage advice where they're like, you know, sexually, you need to meet your spouse's needs. So make sure you ask them how you did. Oh, you know, it's not the time to ask how you did right after you did. (laughs) My ego ego could not handle. I need three days. Uh The best time to say how we should argue is not in the middle of an so argument. Good. Yeah. So you've got to figure out sometime where we're not at odds. Yeah. Where we can say, hey, when you do this, this is how it makes me feel. And hey, how can we make that not a part of our argument? Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, just keep it 100. You can honor a man. You can cover a wife. You can yep. make them feel protected and all that. But there's something in them that response in a negative manner, no yeah. matter what you do. That's great. And that's got to be addressed. Yes. Okay, Pastor Stephen, you must be tapped in because someone asked, um, <clears throat> what is the, the best Holy way to tell your wife that she is sexually boring? Ooh. To, to be clear, we're reading these. This, this yes. is not like a, you know, we're, the they're, they're, they're getting sent in. Can I, this is to a, tell I your wife. Make sure we're clear. That's that she very, is Mm-hmm. I like it. Well, we, 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 could, do, we could do the opposing side. Yes, y'all y'all yeah. take the other side of the argument. Absolutely. Have you ever it's, told... I'm joking. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing if you are 
coming up with new ideas and she keeps shutting you down. Yeah. yeah. It's a completely different thing if you're like, she never shows up excited or blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah, blah. You own some of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can actually build her excitement, mm-hmm. whether it is with foreplay, whether it's with putting the kids to bed and making sure they're already or whatever dishes? it may be. Okay. So, <laughs> Those dishes, man. Those dishes. Because I will scrub every hey, pot. Hey, hey, hey. Not, You've been doing dishes, dishes so many a lot lately, right? right? Somebody Let's bring go. me some dishwashing it's, liquid right now. I can scrub a pot. Yeah. <laughs> Just as long as you know, when that stick is clear. I don't be calm. I mean... So I think it is important to own what you bring to the table. That's That's good. And are you putting your spouse in a position where they can be in the best mood and best energy and all that other good stuff? And I'll let y'all take the other side. The other side, the the, the other thing is there's also unrealistic expectations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you've watched a lot of pornography, if you've had a lot of partners before you got married, there are some unrealistic expectations yeah. that you are going to have to detox from. It's real. Because one human being cannot yeah, fulfill that. every nasty fantasy yeah. that comes up in your mind. And that's not even healthy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a so. nasty fantasy aspect, but there's also even thinking about the woman, she might just be more on the... <sighs> More on the reserved side. Yep. Because, I mean, you learn purity for such a long time. You don't talk about sex. You don't talk about sex. You don't talk about sex. And then now you're married. Sex it up. Sex it up all the time. And it's just like, what, what, what should I do? I can't watch this. I can't watch that. What, what, what do I do? I lift my legs. So I put it down. Like, do I back it up? Like, what? what? All of the above. <laughs> all of the above. At the same time. <laughs> yes. What a, yes. 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 Dear Jesus. But there needs to be, and I think sometimes I've heard it honestly. Some women, it's like, I'm not sure what to do. If I want to spice it up a little bit, I'm not sure where I can even go. And let's say the person had abuse in their past, you know, so now it's like, it's another dimension to however she's performing or another. All I have to say, it's a lot more complicated. And I pray that the person has a lot more grace for them, but even communicating, hey, I love what you said. Maybe we should try this. And I saw that you lift your legs and you can put it right here. And then I sit right there. And then if we do it like this, and then I get it in the back. (laughs) Come on, first lady. Oh my God. All that to say, it's a lot more complicated. You, you, you touched on something. I'm going to put five seconds on it. Um, the church has really preached sex wrong. Yep. And we are so, uh, we, we so want singles to be holy. Yeah. That That's we've good. told them that sex is evil. Come on. And yeah. it's sinful, even to the world, w- place where the world calls it doing the nasty. Right. And then so, all yeah. of a sudden, what I've heard is evil from student ministry until marriage night, yeah. there's supposed to be just a flip in my yeah. mind yeah. all of a sudden. Uh-huh. So I think, like you said, some of us have a to think. unbiblical, adulterated version of holiness That's great. Mm-hmm. that is just being stiff and not enjoying the gift yeah. that God's given you. Well, um, I'm an undercover freak. And <laughs> Jimmy... Uh, Ain't nothing undercover about no, it, bro. No, there's no, no undercover. <laughs> we all know. The marriage bed is undefiled. And I think one of the things that for me, and this is like a for real thing, nine years old, I got exposed to pornography. And I think when all of us have to realize that we have a sexual origin. And what happens is, is your introduction becomes your appetite. And what you were talking about, that stuff needs to get healed. Yeah. You know, when I was also when I was nine, I hated blue cheese. Off, absolutely the worst the worst thing ever and then later on we got married she's like i was like what is this this is amazing blue cheese i had i had just gotten introduced to it when my palate wasn't mature to receive it and i think sex when we talk about sex people get introduced to stuff when their sexual palate in the context of marriage that's when it should be received. Yeah. And that should be your first experience as you talked about that. That origin, in other words, your appetite, what you're asking your spouse to do, is it coming from a healed place? Yeah. 
Yeah. And when you have to hit the reset button. And so what we've been doing and counseling and helping couples with is going back to the sexual origin and helping grow that thing, heal that thing up so that you can now decide in expectations what mm-hmm. leg goes up and, and, oh and, and all of that. That ain't got nothing to do with you playing out a fantasy of something that's not healthy. Yeah. I don't think we, we gotta try blue really cheese. We gonna try blue cheese. Yeah. Uh-uh. <laughs> what are you gonna say? I don't think couples realize how much power we have to help our spouses heal. Hmm. Ooh. We have so much power and authority that God designed for the marriage to heal, redeem. So this origin, okay, we may look at it like, oh my gosh, nobody wants to go that deep that uh, way because it's like, oh my gosh, it's going to hurt. It's ugly. My past is ugly. I don't want to touch that. I don't want to talk about it. But here's the deal. That's actually an opportunity for intimacy. This intimacy that you so desire from your spouse that is far more than just physical. And you have an opportunity to go there with your spouse. But again, ownership, I'm going to own my part, right? So Maybe I'm boring sexually. Not at all. We're good. I, right. This isn't me, but whatever. I'm, you're, <laughs> you're amazing. The best ever. Oh, God. I, I, I mean, just, yeah. Well, thank I, matter you, of fact, babe. we should try tonight. I okay. got some thoughts. So, but here's the thing. If you own the fact that, oh, maybe if my spouse feels that I'm boring, what can, what part of that is true? Maybe there's something from my past that's still showing up in my present and in the bedroom, I'm being triggered by my past and it's making me avoid having sex. Wow. Jimmy became part of my healing. That part did happen to me, Mm -hmm. being all just completely vulnerable. And my husband, I had to ask from him what I needed and what I wanted in the moment. And he would help me bring me present. And it's like, so I'm no longer dealing with triggers anymore. Because he helps me get present quickly, like a touch, a look, uh, just he cares for it. So it's been healed. And so now I'm no longer dealing with that trigger. trigger. My spouse was a part of the healing. And now that intimacy? What? What? Uh, 25 years, bro. So it literally, I'm telling you, you it gets better with time. I, I, my my brain started to go to not how creative, but how often. It's great. And Mm. in a marriage, husbands and wife, at different seasons of the marriage, one person is going to have a higher sex drive than the other, particularly stress, all that other good stuff. Mm. And it's easy within a marriage for the person with the lower sex drive to say, hey, it's not that important. Yeah. There's Mm. more to life. Why Mm. are you? We're not, you know, in high school anymore. Blah, 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 blah. And I think you've got to have a biblical understanding of, of sex which sex is glue for marriage. That's right. It is. Pregnant pause. You can say that again. When <laughs> is it too much glue? Oh. When, when, are, when are we too knitted? When are we too connected? I don't think that's a possibility in no, marriage so when the two become one. So right. we have this, oh, you always, no, yeah, we got, we, right. no, it's too much, it's too much, it's too much. No, this is what God designed mm-hmm. to knit, to glue you together. Yeah. And the more glued you are together, the faster you get through arguments, the faster yeah. you have a, a shared vision, yeah. the faster you want to serve one another and all that other good stuff. So for that person that's like, ah, oh, it's, not, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. It is. Because it's not just about uh, fulfilling one another's needs. It's about gluing a union together, great. Mm-hmm. which is what God designed it for. Okay, we're moving to the next important thing. Is this the ha, ha, ha funny one? Um, oh, I, don't, I don't know if this is so funny. I don't know, man. I don't know if this is funny because <laughs> this is hot. the other big deal in a relationship, which is money. So um, I own my own business. The last few quarters have been a little rough. I've avoided bringing my wife in on all the details, not to burden her with more stress. We need to work on cutting back, but I don't want those cuts to change our standard of living. How do I navigate this season of life? It's a great question. That's wonderful. What role does money play in divorce again? Oh, over 50%. Mm -hmm. And it, it, the, the deal, it, what's interesting is they say money, money fights and money problems are the number one cause of divorce, but it actually has nothing to do with the money mm-hmm. and everything to do with the stress yeah. mm-hmm. that not having yeah. brings. Um, I don't bring all the drama from church home. I, I, I used to, 
And I stopped doing that mm -hmm. because I realized I would come home ticked off about something. I'll tell Zai how ticked off I am. I'll go talk to Jesus and I'll calm down and I'll be fine. And three days later, she's still ticked off about yeah. it. And I done moved on to the next yeah. thing. She's like, where they at? Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> and I realized that if I'm going to be stressed at work, and not that I'm always stressed at work, but mm -hmm. if I'm going to be stressed at work, mm -hmm. some of it I've got to be mindful to leave it in the garage, leave it in the driveway, yeah. and not bring it in the house because home is my safe place. Mm -hmm. And if I'm stressed at work and stressed at home, there literally is no escape from all of it. Mm -hmm. So some of it is, hey, that's just work. Work is up. Work is down. Work is stressful. All of that doesn't need to be brought in. When it's actually affecting our income, yeah. Yeah. And we've got to adjust how we live. Mm -hmm. The question was, I don't want to change our standard of living. That's, That's it. Strange. That's how you end up broke. Yeah. <laughs> in a foreclosure. Yeah. yeah. In, what, what, what's the marriage vows? Like, in richness, in, in uh, sickness or poor. Sickness. Yeah. Help richer, me out because I don't richer remember. Poor. For richer, richer or poor. poor. For richer for poor. Yeah. If, we're, we're, we're in this together. Yeah. yeah. So if you got your salary doubled, you come home and scream and yell about it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're in this together. So if it's a tight season, why not come home and say, hey, this yeah. is where we are. This is, and it's not fair. Because here's what we'll do. The money's not there. We didn't tell our spouse. They're spending the way that they yeah. normally spend. Right. And now there's that. resentment. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't know how I'm stressed out mm -hmm. here. It's not fair. You never told them. Yeah. yeah. You'd be you never brought them in. how, what your spouse is graced for. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not just you and your spouse. It's also you, your spouse, and the Holy Spirit. And also, you may not know, you may not have communicated it, but the Holy Spirit, be, he's active. He's alive. He could be whispering something. You'd be surprised what your spouse is graced to hear, how your spouse is graced mm -hmm. to serve you and partner with you yeah. to partner in this. And I think if something like that was going on, and I'm the wife or I'm the husband, whatever, it's like, I, wa I, wish, I wish you trusted me enough to help. To, we're in this together. Yeah. Now you keeping this from me. Now I'm wondering, is there something else that you're keeping from me? Now I'm mad. Yeah. You know, I'm really yes. mad. It's like, because I'm, I'm here for you and I want to mm -hmm. cover you and I want to be there. Okay, I can get creative. We can cut down DoorDash. I can cook this. We can do this. We can do a yeah. whole. Women are creative. Men are creative. Like we're Come in on. this together. But when you're keeping things away out of fear, fear will produce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fear will produce. That's good. And, it'll, and, uh, and all the things that you're thinking may happen, it yeah. will actually produce Oh, it. yeah. So we have to be careful when we introduce and we listen more to fear than to faith. But honestly, I do, I do believe that our spouses are graced for us. And they're graced for the season. So that good. God is it active is. and working in them to help us in the journey. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd rather know than get your attitude. And have to deal with your attitude. That's what came to mind. Yeah. yeah so just tell me so I know, can have grace for you. If yeah. work is stressful, mm -hmm. you're going to have a bad attitude at home. Yep. Yes. 100%. If your spouse knows, they'll give you grace. Yeah. And hey, let's, let's go out. Let's go for a walk. Let me That's do great. something to kind of yep. get your mind off of. Yeah. But if you just, like you said, you just come with a bad attitude yeah, and right. you didn't tell me why. Side oh, eye. Oh, we got problems. Yeah. But at the core mm. of it, I think it could be money things. I think it could be something else that we are going through individually. Mm -hmm. And because we have major trust issues. And I think people, they've been married perhaps for a long time, and you're just not 100% trusting in your marriage. Mm -hmm. So everyone has a thing where it's like, I'll just handle it. Perhaps. But I just want us, and this is something that I had to learn, like, wait, you trust them with your kids. Like, trust them in wow. this space also. That's Let good. this man in. Like, mm -hmm. allow him to help you and allow him to help heal you because God, he knows yeah. God and he, at so, God put so a lot of what you need in mm -hmm. them. So whether it's money, whether it's something in career, hey, I feel like I've hit, like a, whatever it is, I want us to just be able to trust our spouse just a little bit more, not a little bit more, probably a lot, a lot more because it's going to bring so Straight. much more advancement yeah. Yeah. in our lives. Yeah. Oh my God. Are we throwing to Columbia or you guys have it there? We have one right here. Here it is. My mother-in-law gets on oh. my nerves. I think more than one of y'all sent that in. Yo it's okay. It's worth it. My mother-in-law gets on my nerves. How can I tell my husband that she's crazy and I don't want her around? Uh, this is not mine. This is theirs. This is, this is them. You married. I can't answer that. I have no idea what that is. I think, um, 
What we're talking about, honestly, is boundaries. Yeah. yeah. And the, the basis of marriage is leave and cleave. Mm-hmm. That the two become one. And the boundary is not always, you know, that you want to keep them out. There's a boundary of do you value your marriage enough to keep things in? And I think a lot of things, when people hear the word boundaries, they're like, oh, there they go again. Yeah. You know, just being mean or just setting. When you get married, right, you are leaving. Yep. A man leaves his mother and father and cleaves to his wife. This becomes more important than that. Yeah. This was Irene's family struggled with this. Mm-hmm. And my family struggled with this. Yeah. Just in a different way. Mm-hmm. And we had to literally set expectations that, because if you're a young married, you're like, where do we go for Christmas? Where do we go? It goes mm-hmm. all the way back to what Pastor Stephen says about vision. What have you sat down mm-hmm. and talked about the vision for your yeah. family? Yeah. Yeah. The vision for holidays. Vision ain't just this grandiose thing of the house I'm going to live in one day. This is the rules of engagement of how we are going to do life. You don't have a mother-in-law issue. You have a wife issue that didn't set expectations. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the, it, the issue is not the mother-in-law. Yeah, that's not the issue. My mom can't can't you know come in between us because if this she does, is the bubble, the then bubble. it's my issue that I haven't mm-hmm. checked my mama. So what? It's not that you don't like that's good the mother-in-law. It's that you don't like the part of your wife that hasn't set a boundary with her family because oh. she's more dependent on that than something in your oh. marriage. Yeah. And it, that, so wait, that could, what if that is the case? What would you say? It takes work. Mm-hmm. It takes counseling. It takes I mean, ownership. All the counseling that we've gone yeah. through to get, to get through this stuff. Yeah. It takes, you are not allowed to complain about the marriage that you refuse to work on. Period. Come on. Period. Yeah. Mic drop. Yeah. And, 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 and for us, it took work. It yeah. took me then going to my family and having a conversation. Mm. Yeah. I'm sorry that I've allowed this to happen. And, I did, and I did the same. And she did it with her. Mm. And, but from now on, I want to let you all know, we're not coming to Thanksgiving. Because yeah. I'm setting our own legacy for Tradition, what God yeah. wants to do in our yeah. family. And if your mama don't understand that, that's on her. You can't yeah. fix her. No. She's been the same way for 60 years. She ain't changing. <laughs> that ain't going to change. Right? But only you can change. Yeah. And, and I just think it's so trivial how we set boundaries and everything else. Yeah. But yeah. then, you know what I'm saying? We don't let another dude talk to our girl. Mm. We ready fight. But you let your mama come off crazy with the, on the mouth to your wife. Come on and now. Then and then it's interrupting you because you got to set boundaries, dude, with your mama. Like, like we're on the same team. Exactly. We yeah. got to protect this yeah. right here. I hope y'all didn't skip it. What was the last part of that question? Did y'all leave? How? Right here. Uh oh, where'd it go? It says, How do I tell my husband that I don't want to be around her? Yeah. Around him or around her? her. Oh, yeah. Around his mom. You, you got to have balance for both. Yeah. Mm. We got to have boundaries. This is first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know it's a woman. Bruh, that's his mom. Yeah. That's somebody he loves. Right. To say, I never want to be around somebody that yeah, you love. It's hurtful. That means you don't love me. That, Unrealistic expectation. That's extreme. That's it. It is. So I think that's you good, guys got to figure out how do we have healthy mm-hmm. boundaries. That's it. Yeah. Maybe they're not allowed to the house, but we'll meet them at the mall. Or we'll all go out to the movies together once a year. Hey. Or, that's true. <laughs> Someone's laughing at me at the mall. But... Mm-hmm. I, I, I think it is a cruel, borderline, ungodly request yeah, to I agree. ask somebody to never have a relationship with yeah. their parents just because yeah. you can't. I mean, how, like, how toxic mm, is that person? It's real. Because there's not a lot of people on planet right. Earth that are that toxic. I'm yeah. that You'd be you, surprised. Well, <laughs> yeah. So, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, how do I tell my spouse that they need to work on their physical self? You want me to take this? It's been a couple years. (laughs) God is locked. Go ahead. I used to be 420. My husband used to be 420 pounds, for those of you who don't know. It's a whole lot of of man to love. That's (laughs) all I (laughs) want. It was really hard because how do you explain to someone... When I know he's hurting, that's why he's using food to take him somewhere emotionally. So he's sick. He's emotionally ill. And what I had a hard time with was what's the balance between 
it's not about the physical, right? The balance between being honest about somebody's physical, well, like what they look like, that wasn't the issue. That's not the conversation. The conversation is, Jimmy, you need to be healthy so you don't leave me a single mom with these kids. I didn't sign up to raise these kids by myself. You better take care of yourself so that I don't end up with them by myself. They need their dad. So I approached it from the inside. It, his insides are important to me more than his outsides. Like, I always knew this man. I had a vision. This man that's 160 pounds lighter and healthier than he's ever been in his entire life at 50. Emotionally healthy, spiritually gym? healthy. Why? It, look, that's why my, look, my sex drive has increased. Yeah. This is part, part of it. So, but here's the thing. It's never been about the physical. It's been about me feeling secure because you have taken care of yourself. And so I think having the conversation is more about like approaching it from the standpoint of what are you asking from your spouse? Are you asking for something superficial? Like I married you big. Right? Yeah. You were big I ain't never when had I met an you. Ab, not one. You ain't never had an ab. <laughs> ain't no six pack. So I got I'm a dad bod. That. I'm all right with him not having an ab, right? But I just needed to know that he wasn't gonna Are you sure? I saw you looking at that dude at the beach a couple of, uh, last time. I'm joking, I'm joking. Let me tell you, I could care less about all that Come stuff. On. I just want my Jimmy Rollins. Yeah. That's all. I think uh, one of the things that what I felt because it, it was unhealthy. You knew I was unhealthy. Marcus knew I was unhealthy. And a lot of our conversations got to the place where, bro, you need, you're unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And like you were medicating with alcohol. I was medicating with fried chicken, right? It's true. And, but it was just as bad. Mm -hmm. And when she communicated her fears, not the fear of me being overweight, but the fears of me being gone, the fears of dying, the fears that your son is not going to have. And then she started to show me, you can't go to the games, bro. Like, you can't, you know. When we go on vacation, we're in the hotel. Worried yeah. about the next meal. I feel not, attacked. I'm not even going to tell them all not that. Not in the pool. I'm joking. Like, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Your kids I'm joking. play with you. You ain't like, never took your shirt off to swim. That's the big thing. <laughs> but when she started sharing the fears, mm -hmm. and then when I had congestive heart failure, mm -hmm. and I was laying in a hospital bed, and I saw the tears coming down her face saying, yeah. you can do something about this, yeah. I let her in to that level of accountability. Yeah. What did Jaden say to you? Jaden said, Really? I've been in the hospital bed, my son. He was like, really? All of this for some fried chicken? That's what <laughs> But it hit you then. But I it? had to see what I was missing yeah. out. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Okay. And once I saw that, I was now, like, okay. that's pretty extreme. Yeah. yeah. You know, and some people do have those extreme yeah. situations. What about the person? <laughs> it's not 160 pounds overweight. It might be 30, 40 50 pounds overweight, you can, know? Can I start some drama? Start it. I'm going to just start it. I ain't going to finish it. it. I'm going to start it. Ask How it. could you? Men are different than women. Yeah. Men are very visual. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I'm not allowed to look at the Instagram models. Uh -huh. I'm not allowed to look at homegirl at the beach. Yeah. Right. I'm supposed to look at the one that I said till death do us part. Uh-huh. And there is a, I'm committed to you no matter what. Uh -huh. But there's also, was it the uh, Frozen movies that the homegirl said? I let it go, let, let it, it go. go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I am I know I'm getting in trouble, I don't no, care. No, it's real. After, and it, I'm in big trouble, it's all the way good. After what are you about to say? children and work and stress and all that, some people stop caring. Yeah. Okay. And it's not fair to your spouse physically and visually if you want them to be in love with something that you're not caring for. It's great. Mm. <laughs> I think two things. Number one, <laughs> I'm going to be a little controversial. Go ahead. Oh, really? And I'm going to come at the women for a second. Oh. Ready? Because I got muscles now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got because muscles now. Because you have now. been working. Is, you, okay, go ahead. That old T-shirt that you've been wearing... Every night, listen, I, for 20 years. I went on Amazon recently and purchased I, a bunch of these. Irene bought some <laughs> Amazon stuff the other day, and I was like, that looks like trash. <laughs> I, 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 like I feel like I'm laying next to my mama. <laughs> there, there, there's 10 pillows in the bed, Steven. There's, <laughs> I don't even have room no more. 
can we turn the lights on? Why, 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 why we gotta turn the lights off so fast? Can we? I can't I, see. I can't I see the lights on. No I'm a freak. I want the lights on. I want to see what I'm working with. Cut them oh lights on, guys. But honestly, we just did a podcast. Uh, uh, we just shot out season of podcast, and it literally is. Uh, I'm married to you, but she just because we got married didn't mean she got ugly. Hmm. Come on. Like. Attraction is real, and we live in this sexual culture, uh -huh. and Instagram is real, and the algorithm is real, and the enemy knows your algorithm. And so mm -hmm. Irene knows yes. what I like. She knows what I like, right? If I married you because of your booty, I'm still looking at booty. <laughs> it's a part of it. No, what I'm saying is, is we get holy in church and act like we, 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 we lost our attraction. No, mm. I yeah. honestly believe what you said is true. And I'll say it because I'm the one working on it. And I thank God that you have made health a priority because if you didn't, I would struggle. Mm -hmm. I'm just, just keeping it 100. And so, yes, your husband, I know from a man's you know, standpoint, it, what, he, what attracted him to you, he's still attracted to. And I just want this to be my attraction. So my prayer every day, every single day mm -hmm. I get up for, at 50 years old, 24 years married, is God, today I pray that, you make covenant, that I make covenant with my eyes mm -hmm. that they are only attracted to the body of my wife. Because without the Holy Spirit, my eyes wander it's true it's, it's real but don't nobody want to want to admit it but what you said is true yeah. we got to keep it together we got to get in the gym we got to eat right we got to make sure if you value what you have if you'll you value, value what, what you, you have, have. Mm. come on mm. that's good just scripturally like the bible says your body doesn't belong to you it's yeah. not your own it belongs to me it, so <laughs> you better finish that first <laughs> Anyway, y'all better not be staying in my hotel tonight. Dude, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, am I'm I sorry. caring for this? Not even just for me, yeah. yeah, and for my own longevity. But if my body doesn't belong to me, it also belongs to him. So I got to care for it. That's part of me honoring him. Yeah, and That's I'm not talking beautiful. about yeah. It's part of me honoring my husband is yeah. caring for myself physically yeah. because he is stimulated by his eye gate. Yeah, you know, and so yeah, like and. I think we should be talking about it more. Like, how am I doing, babe? Like, I'll say, how am I doing in meeting your needs? How are you doing emotionally? Yeah. I'm not asking, did you look at porn? I'm not asking, did you take a second, third look at that girl, whatever. I'm asking, where, how are you doing emotionally? Yeah. And how am I doing showing up to meet your needs emotionally? That's good. Because yeah. then he's not going to be using food porn or these other things to yeah. satiate him yeah does wow. that make sense yeah so if my, my temperature check to see how jimmy's doing is how he's doing emotionally i love that yeah. going yeah. back to the health thing because it is a major thing if you say hey you're not that attracted to me i'm not that attracted to you anymore then i feel some type oh, of way that's so be careful of i am um, it's cruel it's very cruel yeah. but yeah. hey i want us to go on a health journey together that's right that's then that it. makes it a lot better. Yeah. We don't have to do all these different things and join CrossFit mm -hmm. and stuff like that. We can actually do this together. We can go on a walk. So now we're getting healthy and we're communicating mm -hmm. at the same time. I mm -hmm. see couples in our neighborhood, they go on these walks and I'm like, oh my, that's so, so cute, cute yeah. to me. He won't go on a walk with me, y'all. <laughs> we're going to try pickleball. I bought a car for that. Where you want to go? <laughs> The point is, when you invite them into, into it, yeah. it's no longer you right. got to work on this. You got to, because some people say, well, it's not, you're just not the romantic anymore. Before, when we were first dating, when we first got married, you used to be so romantic. You used to plan out all the dates, and now you don't. I feel bored. I feel like you don't care about me anymore. Okay, well, let's make this together. Let's do this yeah, together. Cool. Hey, you plan two dates, and then I plan two dates, and let's mm -hmm. do this together. When we, where there's unity, that's where God commands the blessing. So if you can, get, you can do a weight loss by yourself, but when you're, Getting healthy together? Yeah. What? One of the things, sex, we, that we have a rule. One so sex rule you have? A, we have a sex rule. <laughs> One of the sex rules that we have oh. is... I'm really is, nervous with is, you about to say, Jimmy. Is, <laughs> because here's what happens. Like, I don't want to get... To, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm 17 or 18. I, no, I feel like I'm 25 sometimes. I get disappointed when I get turned down. You know what I mean? Like, I'm married, but I, I'm disappointed. Like, you know what I mean? Stupid. Like, I get married, I'm going to get upset. <laughs> You know what I mean? I gotta go to sleep on my kickstand. You know oh, what I'm saying? So, yeah. so. It, it took him a minute. So, it took him a minute. So, so, here's our rule. 
Here's our rule. Here's our rule. I can't breathe. If you, if you, if, if you for some oh reason turn down sex. Uh -huh. So if I say, honey, can we, can we, you know, and she's, you know, no, like I'm tired or whatever. Uh -huh. She now, it's on her. She has 48 hours to initiate. And it's on me But that's initiate. our rule. Yeah. yeah. So wow. it, it works for us. So if I turn it down, now I have 48 hours to initiate. Yeah. And that's just, honestly, that has been I our secret sauce. We've, um, we've been married for half as long as they are. Uh -huh. So therefore, we should be 24 hours. Yeah, we I agree. Just... Yeah. <laughs> 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 I love it. How do we come up with this stuff so fast? No. Can you ask them what they do the sex rule? Huh? Ask, the, ask them if they'll do a sex rule. Y'all do it? Y'all gonna do it with us? Sex roll? Come on up. Come Would on, you wait a minute. 40, 48 hours. 48 hours? Come on now. Just grab your wife's hand and just lift her hand up. 48 hours? Come on now. I see a lot of hands down. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that rule, Jimmy. That's I owe great. you an offer, I'm my guy. You, bro. I'm helping all, all right, of y'all. Two more questions and we done. Two more questions. Here we go. Okay. How do I get my husband to be more of an active father? Say again? How do I get my husband to be more of an active father? He grew yeah. up in a household where his dad wasn't very present. Mm -hmm. How do I get him to become more emotionally available to our kids? Mm -hmm. That's a that. great question. I'm sure he wants to be an active father. I'm sure he wants to be a good father. And I think us women, we are emotional. We know the temperature of the home sometimes mm -hmm. a little bit more. We know what's happening with the kids a little bit more. Set him up for wins. So it's not like, hey, you're missing out on this. You're missing out on this. You didn't show up again. It's like, hey, I think Roman would like if you do this. Hey, I bought this. Just say you got it for him. And we can do. So we just have to set them up for this win. He mm -hmm. talked to me a long time ago. He's like, I want to be present. I want to do a lot of things. But sometimes I'm not sure exactly what to do. And sometimes I think they're, it sounds dumb. I think some men, they're not really sure what's needed of them. And sometimes some ages, some men might connect more with their kids when they're younger. Some men, it's like, okay, when they are teenagers, that's when they're really going to connect a little bit more. So I know that varies, but as women, as wives, I think just set them up. Hey, do this with this. Hey, do this with that. And celebrate when they do it, because I'm sure he doesn't want to be just like his dad in that regard. That's great. So it's affirming. I know you want to be a great dad, and I see that in you, and I love that. So I think you could do this a little bit. And, mm -hmm. and when they do it... Right. Great. You know, um, celebrate the um, mess out of them. I just, was that too loud for you? <laughs> I don't know. I just thought about our new puppy. Here, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's what it good felt job, like. Steven. That's what it felt like. Good job, Steven. Steven, good job. You're never the kids. I'm sorry. That's so bad. It's so bad. It's very similar. Here, here, here's the thought that comes to my mind. What? You, you don't really want him to be a more active father. You want to raise great children. A more active father is the seed, great children is the fruit. And what I'm hearing is a lack of vision of, hey, let's talk about the type of children we want to raise. Who, who do we want them to be That's at great. 12, yeah. 16, yeah. 18, 21? Yeah. I can't get them there without you. So the kids that we see them That's being, so they'll never yep. be those kids without if you. you're not active. So active is not the goal. The goal is here's the type of kids we want to raise, Straight. and it requires you being present. That's so good. So much but again, how do you? No, get some drama. You I'm about know. to say something. It's I know you're about drama, to say though. something. It's my drama. Yeah. Hmm. No, say it. It's okay. So this okay. this this marriage issue. I'm on a, I'm on a limb, guys. So if I'm sleeping on the couch tonight, pray for me. <laughs> my wife grew up um, without a father in the home. Mm -hmm. So single mom and her mom and the siblings, they did everything just with them. Yeah. So one of my frustrations early on in marriage is I'll get home from work and they're all at the park. Yeah. And I'm like, I wanted to come to the park. Hilarious. And she assumed that men don't go to the parks with kids. Wow. Wow. She's I like, I thought I was good. doing you a favor wow. by yeah. getting the kids out of your space. 
so that you could just come home and relax and all that. Yeah. And, and that's where the, hey, I need you to help me be present yeah. by letting me know where they're going to be, that's good. including yeah. me in their fun. That's good. Maybe, and I've, I've even said this before, I have a seven-year-old daughter said, hey, I want to take Zoe out on dates with just me and her. But with all that's going on, I don't got the time to plan it. Yeah. If you could just pick the where, the when, and have her dress, I will be ready with the car. I'll take her out. We'll have amazing daddy-daughter That's time. Great. But if That's you good. expect me to come up with the location Idea, and the everything. time uh-huh. and the date and know her schedule, it's just not it's likely. It's like she said, you, you, you set him up for the win. Yeah. I love that. It yeah. That's great. Teamwork, so teamwork, teamwork. That's great. Am I good? Oh, I'm good. Okay. So good. Last one. We out of here, guys. Last question. Last okay. My wife wants to cut back on eating out, but... She you cannot cook. cook. Please help. Uh-oh. Please. Show yourself. Who's this question? Who's yourself. this? The question was from Columbia. <laughs> it was from That's Columbia. why it's anonymous. That's why it's dark in here. Oh, my God. Read it again. I just want to laugh again. Just, just one more time. She wants to cut back on eating out, uh-huh. but she can't cook. I'm stuck. Please help. <laughs> Please help. S O S. That's hilarious. I, uh, I, I could be, I could be wrong. I, what? Go ahead. With all this social media. And te- right? At this you, point, it's not that she not can't not cook. She don't want to cook. She can't read. Like, she can't read. She can't see. What? She can't yeah. see. Watch your face. She don't care. <laughs> Like, honestly, there are so many things in our lives that we can just say, I don't want to do. Yeah. yeah. When you get married, you check that at the door. Yeah. Right? That's good. Like, like, you check it at the door. That's I love good. to cook. I do the cooking, the, the majority of the cooking in the house. I love to be creative. I'm creative. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's how I rest. You're I can do cook. six Easter services. I'm cooking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I love to cook, but I love learning too. So it's, I don't understand. Everything we do is learned. <laughs> Come on. Everything so you, you we can do learn is learn. You can learn. That's a bad excuse yeah. of lazy. Like, don't be a lazy spouse. Like, I'm going to be honest. Like, like, like make it an activity. Salt and to pepper, un- some adobo, Together. some sazon, a little jerk some seasoning, seasoning. <laughs> a little jerk seasoning. It's not that hard. <laughs> if you can't make black folk spaghetti, you just done. <laughs> it's so easy. Some ground beef. A gu- yeah, come on, y'all. Um, <laughs> Is the best cook ever, right? I, I, I'm sorry. He's it, phenomenal. Hilarious. Yeah, no, you could. No, I think it's probably. Hmm. I, I literally I, I can't think cook. of an excuse. Listen, listen. No, no, I, no, honestly, I'm and I think for Pops is here. Steven's dad, Pastor Pops, is a phenomenal cook as well. Um, Steven's mom was a phenomenal cook as well. So I'm stepping into this, and you know my favorite thing to make. A reservation. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love it. That's, uh, that's amazing.